Hello, this is Dr. Bill, and we're here today to look at fractions. Fractions tend to confuse students quite a bit for the ACT, SAT, other standardized tests, and even for school. So fractions are not hard. We just need to consider a few things. So we're going to look at basically everything today that you need to know about fractions. If you like the lesson today, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and hit the notification bell so you'll be able to see all future videos. Okay, let's start with adding or subtracting fractions with the same denominator. Again, this is quite easy. If we have 1 seventh plus 2 sevenths, we basically add the numerators, so we get 3 over 7. And that's your answer, 3 sevenths. Okay? If you're subtracting fractions with the same numerator, it's the same thing, only we're subtracting. So 4 fifths minus 1 fifth is 4 minus 1, which is 3 over 5. And there we go. Okay? Let's look at adding or subtracting fractions with different denominators. This is more difficult because you can only add or subtract if you have a common denominator. So one way to do this, if we look, we see 2 thirds plus 1 eighth, we see that we have a 3 and an 8 in the denominator. What we can do is we can multiply the first fraction 2 thirds by 8 over 8, which is just 1. And we can multiply anything by 1 without changing its value, right? So here we would have a denominator of 24. Then we can do the same thing for 1 eighth, except here we're multiplying this by 3 over 3, which again is 1, so we're not changing the value of that fraction either. So the first fraction becomes 8 times 2, which is 16 over 8 times 3, which is 24, plus 3 times 1 is 3, over 3 times 8 is 24. And now we have created a common denominator of 24, and these fractions can be added, and we get 19 24 19 24 cannot be reduced because 19 and 24 do not have a common factor. So that would be our final answer, okay? All right, let's try this with 1 third minus 5 sevenths. We're gonna do the same thing. We need to create that common denominator. So we can do that by multiplying the first fraction by seven over seven, and the second fraction by three over three, and when we multiply the first, 7 times 1 is 7 over 21. That's a 2. Okay, minus 3 times 5, which is 15 over 21. Now here we see we're going to have a negative fraction because obviously 7 minus 15 is a negative number. And the easy way to do that is just to subtract the smaller number 7 from the bigger number 15 and then take the sign of the bigger number. Now 15 is the bigger number. It has a negative, so the answer is going to be negative. 15 minus 7 is 8 over 21, and that is our answer. Okay? All right, now let me show you an even easier way and faster way to do uh, fractions with different denominators. These are the same exact fractions here, right? Same exact fractions. But instead of multiplying the first one by 8 over 8 and the second one by 3 over 3, we're going to do what I call criss cross across, right? And then 8 times 2 is 16. And this is addition, so plus. 3 times 1 is 3 over 8 times 3 is 24, and we get 16 plus 3 over 24, which is, again, 19 24 That's a lot faster, okay? And we can do the same thing with subtraction. Again, criss, cross, across, 
7 times 1 is 7 minus, because it is subtraction, 3 times 5 is 15 over 7 times 3 is 21, and then we get again negative 8 21sts, which is the same answer we got on the previous page, okay? All right, let's look at what we do for multiplying fractions with any denominator. It doesn't matter what these are. Now, you see here, the first one, we have 4 fifths times 15 thirty-sixths. If we actually go across and multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators, we're going to get a very big and clumsy number. It's even worse in the second fraction. So what we're going to do here is reduce across the multiplication sign. We see the direction of the multiplication sign. We can reduce in that direction. So from 4 to 36 and 5 to 15. So let's start here. 4 and 36 are both divisible by 4. That is the greatest common factor. So 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 36 nine times. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 15 three times. 1 times 3 is 3 over 1 times 9 is 9. And 3 ninths can reduce to 1 third because both 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 9 three times. And there we go. We have 1 third. Okay, let's look at this monster down below. We see here quite ugly fractions, right? But again, if we reduce in the direction of the multiplication sign, this becomes very manageable, right? We have here 150 goes into 150 once. 150 goes into 450 three times. Then here, 375 goes into 375 one time, and 375 goes into 750 two times. And then we just multiply the numerators. 1 times 2 is 2 over 1 times 3 is 3, and we're left with 2 thirds. Again, that would have been a very ugly reduction if we had multiplied it first, okay? All right, let's see what else we have in store, right? Let's take a look at how to divide fractions with any denominator, right? Usually in school, we learn that when we divide fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of the second number, right? And again, the reciprocal is just the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. And then again, we can reduce in the direction of the multiplication sign. Here, 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 27 nine times. 1 times 9 is 9 over 1 times 3 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is simply 3. Okay, there's even an easier way. I call this my ear method because it ends up looking like an ear. And what we do is we say we draw a semicircle bottom to top and then from the middle and over. It looks a little bit like an ear, so I call it my ear method, right? And the way we do this is bottom to top stays on top. That's 27. The other one goes on the bottom. 3 times 3 is 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. Voila, same answer. Okay? All right, let's look at reducing fractions, right? Here we have to find a common factor, a number that we can divide into both numbers. It's good to find the greatest common factor if possible because we can get the work done more quickly. But here, if you don't recognize, for example, that 12 and 60 are both divisible by 12, you could start with something easy like 2. Now, clearly, 12 and 60 are both even numbers, so we know they're both divisible by 2. So let's see what happens when we just start dividing numerator and denominator by 2 until we can't do it anymore, right? Okay, 2 goes into 12 six times. 
2 goes into 30 how many times? 30. Okay. I'm sorry, 2 goes into 60 30 times. Now, we have 6 thirtieths. Okay. If, again, you don't see that there's a common factor of uh, 6, you could, again, use 2. 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 30 15 times, right? At this point, you'd probably see that both 3 and 15 are divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 15 five times, and that's as low as we can go. So 12 sixtieths equals 1 fifth. Again, if you had recognized that both 12 and 60 were divisible by 12, you could have said 12 goes into 12 one time, 12 goes into 60 five times. Okay, let's try another one with 6 54ths. Again, if you don't recognize immediately that both of these numbers are divisible by 6, you could start small with 2, and you could say 2 goes into 6 three times, 2 goes into 54 27 times, right? And then you would see probably that both 3 and 27 are divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 27 nine times, and there we are, okay? All right, let us continue. Feel free to watch the video again if you need to review anything in more detail. Okay, let's look at finding the square root of fractions, right? And again, a square root simply means a number multiplied by itself that would equal another number. So the square root of 4, for example, is 2, because 2 times 2 equals 4. Okay, so if we have the square root of 3 sevenths, this would simply be equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 7. But there's a rule in math that you can never leave a square root sign in the denominator that is considered undefined, right? So we have to, what is called, rationalize this denominator, which essentially means we have to get rid of it, right? And we can do that by multiplying the square root of 3 over the square root of 7 by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. Now that is just 1, and again, we can multiply anything we want by 1 without changing the value. A million times 1 is a million. 2 times 1 is 1. The square root of 3 over the square root of 7 times 1 is still that, but this way we're actually changing the form, right? So here we would get the square root of 3 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 21 over the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49. Now look what happens. We have the square root of 21 in the numerator, and in the denominator, the square root of 49 is 7, because 7 times 7 is 49, and we have successfully cleared the square root sign out of the denominator, so we're left with the square root of 21 over 7, right? Okay, sometimes, as in the square root of 3 sixteenths, we'll have an even square in the denominator, and we won't have to rationalize the fraction which is to say here, if we have the square root of 3 over, or the square root of 3 sixteenths, we have the square root of 3 over the square root of 16. So in the numerator, we have the square root of 3. And in the denominator, the square root of 16 is simply 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. So we're left with the square root of 3 over 4. And again, we don't need to rationalize that denominator. Okay, let's go on to fractional exponents. Fractional exponents are just a way of taking roots and powers. So this looks really scary, but it's not, okay? If we have, for example, a raised to the b over c, we can think of this as a rotation. The denominator c rotates out and becomes the root and the numerator b rotates down and becomes the exponent. So we're left here with the a root 
I'm sorry, the C root, my mistake, let me... Sometimes we make mistakes, we just fix them. Okay, so the C root of A to the B power, right? So that would be, again, equal to the C root of A to the B power, okay? Let's see how that would work here. Okay, we have X to the one-half raised to the third power. We have to always do PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction in that order. So here, the first thing we would want to do is deal with the parentheses, which is X to the one-half, right? So again, we have our rotation. The two rotates out and becomes the root. The numerator rotates down and becomes the exponent. So this is actually the square root. Now, when we have a square root, that two is an option. We don't have to write it there, but here we are for clarity. We'd have the square root of x raised to the first power, right? And then we raise that to the third power. And this becomes basically the square root of x to the third. Okay? All right, great. Let's look now at converting fractions to decimals to percentages. This is really the last thing that you have to do on something like the SAT or ACT. Okay. Now here, I know a lot of people nowadays are very reliant on calculators and they're not used to long division anymore. But here, if you don't happen to know the decimal equivalent of four-fifths, we would have to divide four by five. So let's do that over here. We divide four by five. And again, we want to keep that decimal point lined up perfectly so we don't confuse anything. And five goes into 40 eight times. So four-fifths is point eight. Okay, now if we want to do the percentage equivalent of point eight, we simply move the decimal point over two places to the right. So one, two would make that 80%. So here, four fifths equals 0.8, which equals 80%, okay? Let's try that also for one third. Here we've got essentially one divided by three. Let's do the decimal point. And we do 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. Bring down a 0. 3 goes into 10 3 times. So as you can see, this just repeats, right? So it's going to be 0.3 repeating, right? Now, I like to carry that out three places because, right, we say that the decimal would be 0.333. And then when I want to convert that to a percentage, I move it over one, two places to the right, and I end up with 33.3%. Okay, so that's it for today for the fractions. Thank you very much for your attention. Again, if you found this lesson valuable, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the like, notify others that you think could benefit from it and uh, hit the notification bell so you can be notified of any videos that come out. Thanks, and see you next video.